One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours. If you're lucky, you could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Where are you going to live now? It looks like in the woods. Well, I'm not even worried. You probably already know that you gotta stuff leaves under your shirt to keep warm, filter your drinking water, and no, don't eat anything, idiot! So, while you're not yet too far gone, listen carefully all around you. The noise of a tractor can be heard from three to four kilometers away. A dog barking two to three kilometers away. A train going by can be heard from 10 kilometers away. And BTS songs, well, you can always hear them. Yee, what's that, Arnold? Ooh, just look. This little kid, he's lost, just like you. After all, slow lorises live mainly in tropical forests. Don't even try to pet him, Arnie. Lorises lick their elbow joints, which secrete a deadly venom so their bite can kill you. You should follow animal paths. It'll be great if you can find flowing water, a stream or river. Here you can get food by catching fish. Yeah, uh, Arnold, doing it that way, you'll be here all day. And as you can see, I was right. Night is the most dangerous time in a forest. Hey, uh, buddy, I think you ought to spend the night here in this tree. Yeah, it ain't the Ritz, but it sure is safe. In the morning, you need to get to a clearing so you're visible to rescuers. Finding a person in a forest is a very special operation involving rescuers, volunteers, and the military. The terrain is divided into squares, and each one is thoroughly combed. There was a case where somebody who was lost without knowing it ended up looking for himself. This guy managed to get out of the forest, didn't tell anyone, and joined in the search looking for him. You can be seen from the air if you make a fire. It's best to throw fresh foliage on it to make it really smoky. Oops. It's not the rescuers who found you, but a local hunter. He saw your fire. <laughs> Decided to go on a trip, did ya? The cheapest ticket on a cruise ship is $860. Get in the box. Hurry, you schmuck. While all 6,000 passengers and almost 2,200 crew members are posing for a photo of their anniversary cruise in front of the ship, you have a chance to get on board. At the moment, we don't have any ad revenue. Or any money at all, really. Hey, don't touch anything here. Somehow, your imbecility is heraldic, Arnold. You've managed to fulfill the dreams of oh so many. To be absolutely alone on a massive cruise ship! Woohoo! 
For just a simple seven-day trip, they have more than 12,000 eggs, 380 kilograms of ice cream, and two tons of seafood and meat on board. This amount of food will be enough to last you around five years if you eat it all by your lonesome. After going on a cruise like this one, people on average gain up to three kilograms of excess weight. Cruise ships have a ton of entertainment, so much so in fact that for most passengers, seven days isn't enough to do and see it all. Oops, looks like we're out of fuel. At full speed, the ship burns up to five tons of fuel per day. Now you'll drift in the ocean just like all the other cruise liners do, because it's cheaper than staying in port. Arnold, looks like your vacation's gonna be a wee bit longer than we expected. A whole month has passed. I wonder where this current will carry you. Congratulations, Arnold. Now the whole world hates you. Yay. Pack your bag, schmucko. Relax, you're in the middle of the ocean with no one to disturb you. There's not a soul within a radius of even hundreds of kilometers. Don't cry, I'll help you survive, you little jerk. Just listen carefully and remember everything I tell you. First of all, it's absolutely necessary to find clean drinking water. The easiest way is to lick the dew drops that collect on the raft. Not that, Arnie, that's bird shit. Alas, the number of such dew drops is way too small for you to survive long. A more difficult way is to find some kind of tank to collect rainwater. But you might die before it ever rains. So let's move on to the third method, and the most difficult one. Arnold is too stupid to pull this off, but you, dear audience, listen. From two containers, a bag, and a weight, you can build a water distiller. Put the salty ocean water in a large container and it will evaporate, gathering at the center of the bag and dripping into the smaller container. And voila, your freshly distilled drinking water is ready. Arnie, time to go fishing. Eat everything you catch that doesn't look poisonous. Algae, plankton, jellyfish, and even small fish can be caught with just a simple t-shirt. Yeah, it might taste like shit, Arnie, but who the heck are you? to complain. I don't advise you to look at the ocean for too long. The sun's rays are reflected from its surface and will burn your eyes. You will no longer see the world, but the world will still see you. It's better the other way around. Arnie, you should build a canopy over the raft to shield yourself from UV rays. Thermal shock in the open ocean is guaranteed death. But, however, a storm is coming long before the sun can even begin to threaten you. To keep the raft from rolling over, put all heavy objects in the center and pray to Poseidon for mercy. Congratulations, you survived the storm. But still, there remains the problem of finding land. You know, I forgot to tell you, Arnie. You're at the furthest point from land in the entire world ocean, Point Nemo. The nearest human settlement is 400 kilometers away, and that's at the International Space Station. Mm. How about some happy time for you then? We can arrange that. Here, take this remote. As you can see, it has three buttons. Press the first one. You've just traveled three billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity, and that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just gonna have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there, and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs. 
build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. It's time for the third button, Arnold. And you've still got two fingers left to press it. I believe in you, man. Press the button. Are you surprised you're the only passenger on board? This Boeing 767 belongs to the most dangerous airline in the world. <laughs> right after the company was founded in 2003, one of its aircraft went off the runway during landing. Passengers received many injuries, but fortunately all survived. Then, again, after some time, one of its planes disappeared from radar half an hour before landing. After two days of searching, it was found, crashed into a mountain, and out of 104 people on board, only microbes survived. Rule number one on a plane, always buckle up. Air density is constantly changing. Imagine this, it's summer. You're flying over a field with a warm breeze blowing up at the plane. Then suddenly the field ends and you start flying over a cold lake. The warm winds suddenly stop influencing the plane and you start going wee! Turbulence will shake the plane and can knock it down by three meters. And all of this is happening at a speed of 800 kilometers an hour. And if you're not buckled up during a sudden 2G load, you're a goner. Every single collision with your seat or the plane will break your ribs, twist your arms, break your skull, and then, holy shit. Rarefied gas, which flies out of the engine, attracts lightning more strongly than anything on land. But the most interesting thing is that large planes often create lightning themselves. From the tail, an electrical discharge of hundreds of thousands of amps extends into the clouds, and from the nose into the ground. Lightning can break the windshield and disable all the electronics on board. Hold on, Arnold. Lightning could have worse than the stubble on your hands. Oh, my God, Arnold. It's like the wheelchair one last time. At your funeral, you will Arnold, wake up. I have a surprise for you. Of course, you know I'm your ally in battling your social phobia. I've decided to help you by moving you further away from people, specifically to the top of Mount Everest. The mountain's other name is Chomolungma, and it's the highest point on planet Earth. By the way, just saying, but you owe me $50,000. This is the average price for an expedition up here. To survive at the top, you need top-level equipment. After all, there's very little oxygen, and it's extremely cold. Go down, quickly, at least a kilometer. Hurry up, Arnold, but move as slowly as possible. Oxygen is only one-third the normal here. Try to save your energy. Lack of air causes the brain to misperceive time. Crawling five meters in three hours sounds a little too slow to me. Fortunately, the wind at the top reaches 200 meters per second, and it can help us. You can fly eight kilometers in just three minutes. But be careful, the ledges may get in your way. Lucky you, you fell into the trash. Everest tourists leave so much garbage on the mountain that the government pays $2 for every kilogram of garbage collected. I see you're trying to pay me my $50,000 back. Arnold, try not to breathe so much. At a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, your lungs will begin to dry out. Mountain coughs are so bad they can even break your ribs. I'm sorry, Arnold, but climbers can't remove corpses from Mount Everest. It's impossible. Moreover, corpses are used as height markers for mountain peaks. Well, Arnold, at least you found something useful to do. I see you're really happy to be here, buddy, especially after such fiercely cold conditions. Uh, I think perhaps you're enjoying it a little too much. Hello, Arnold. It looks like you started hallucinating from a lack of oxygen, and someone brought you to the campfire. I'm glad that you woke up, but there are still six kilometers ahead of us. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the strength left to reach home. But wait, Arnold, I have an idea. You can repeat the feat of Marco Sifredi. In 2001, he descended Mount Everest on a snowboard. I believe in you, Arnold. Ah. 
multiple broken bones, and the last stages of frostbite. But we reached the Earth! Arnold, it's unbelievable! Come on, shout with me. Hooray! <laughs> Arnold, I was just kidding! You can't scream in the mountains. It can trigger an avalanche. Don't worry, Arnold. I'm not going to leave you here. You still owe me $50,000. Poor Arnold's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree. It's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. Now you won't feel like you're wasting time because every second of our lives is beautiful. Oh, fudge. Well, apparently not today. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked. She invited you to visit her. But, hey, buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're gonna need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree. For the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy. It's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. And a person is not the most amazing thing ever delivered in a package. An entire bank was transported this way. It was dismantled and sent to another city. Welcome to Australia, Arnold. One of the benefits of traveling by package is courier delivery right to the final destination point. Bertha will be here any minute. Wow, what a babe. Arnold, are you ready? Good look for you, Arnold. She definitely won't forget you like that. How do you like Australia, Arnold? Don't move! It looks like that's an inland taipan. Hey, dumbass! That's the most venomous land snake on Earth! The taipan's venom is 180 times more toxic than a cobra's. A drop the size of a pinhead can kill 1,000 rats. And 44 milligrams of this venom, which the snake injects in a single bite, can kill over 100 Arnold's. Running is useless. The taipan does not slink away after the first bite like other snakes, but continues with a series of lightning-fast, 
super precise attacks to finish off the victim. These 13 millimeter long fangs just injected a powerful hematoxin into your blood that prevents it from clotting. This leads to internal bleeding. You lose control of your body. Your limbs stop obeying. Breathing becomes difficult and convulsions begin soon after. Oh, don't worry, Arnold, that's not blood. That's urine. Your muscle cells literally begin to dissolve and leave through your kidneys. Due to this, your urine becomes red. If you don't take an antidote within 30 minutes, then for the next eight hours, during what's left of your worthless life, you will experience hellish pain that will make you beg to be finished off sooner. Ooh, hello, Arnold. Hey, yeah, let's fly to Mars. Your friend Elon has a program for this. Everything we need is already waiting for us on the big red planet, and we fly immediately while the window between Earth and Mars is still open. You ready? Okay then, fasten your seat belts and three, two, one, go! Although it's a really long flight, I promise you won't get bored. It's a meteor cluster, Arnie. Look out, they can damage the shuttle. Quickly, get to the cargo hold. It's the only place that can protect you. By the way, we're in a closed, sealed, unventilated area, and there's not much oxygen left, so try to save it. Perhaps, for the first time in a long time, you're truly lucky, Arnold. But alas, with you, it's all in vain. Legumes contain a lot of sucrose, which isn't digested in our stomachs. The most harmful types of sucrose lead to bloating. They're called raffinose, stachyose, and verbiscose. When they enter your intestines, bacteria begin to produce huge amounts of gas. So now you have to breathe your own farts. Serves you right, you moron. Come on, it's not so bad, Arnie. Breathe your fart. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide can prevent mitochondrial cell damage. That makes it possible to prevent the development of diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, and even and stroke. So breathe deeply, Arnold. It's actually healthy. Well, I really didn't think you'd make it this far, buddy, but you're doing great. Really? Hey, buddy, I thought I'd do something nice. I saved a suit for you. Nice. Skip it about the Careful, Arnold. Wind speeds on Mars can reach up to 100 meters a second. That's fast. Finally, some decent food. Open it quick. Let's see what's inside. Beans. Beans again. And again. And what's that there? What does it say? Hello, champion. I hope you have enough of this supply of healthy and very nutritious beans to wait until the next ship arrives. We'll send it when Mars and Earth next pass as close as possible to each other in about two years. Good luck! Ah! Arnold, stop eating food that's meant for the crew. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready! To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold! Green! I doubt that any of the astronauts are going to rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow, during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't going to do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's going to stay in one place. So, here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy in just 60 seconds could carry you as far as three kilometers, but this will significantly reduce your air supply. So let's move on to the second option, burrito. You wrapped it in foil and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! 
Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of three meters per second and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? You're gonna have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. Ooh. The average distance from Earth to the moon is 384,467 kilometers, and every year the moon moves three and a half centimeters further away. In the entire history of humanity so far, only 12 people have stepped on the surface of the moon. You will be the 13th. I agree, it's not the luckiest number, but just imagine, there'll be no one on the moon except for you. True, this ain't Miami. The temperature is minus 173 degrees Celsius. And everywhere you go, there's radiation 200 times higher than on Earth. So you can't do it without a spacesuit. But in the meantime, as a tourist, you can check into the hotel. Although construction isn't slated until 2025. Let's go to the far side of the moon. Especially because there's a bunch of cool equipment left there by astronauts. Arnold, jump into the lunar rover, start the engine, and drive. Believe it or not, there are a few lunar seas. Only, they're not filled with water, but solidified lava. Arnold, wrong pedal! Hit the brake! Congratulations, Arnold. You just smashed into the U-22 Chinese lunar rover, and you damaged your spacesuit. Oh, no. Don't worry, Arnold. Help is on the way. True, it's going to take him three days to get here. Decided to hang out in the park, did you? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or, Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected! It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly. But you will lag behind in progress and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. 
Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. I guess that burrito was a mistake. <laughs>